The Hundredth Monkey is a philosophy based upon the writing of a man named Rupert Sheldrake. Rupert Sheldrake lives in England, and he has written a book, which I have been studying, called A New Science of Life. And it was voted by the American Academy of Physics as the book most likely to be burned by their academy. <laughs> All right? Because it is so blasphemous and absurd and silly, the notions inside of it. What Rupert Sheldrake is suggesting is that memory, which is what we can recall of all the things that have happened to us, is simply not stored in the brain. It's just not stored in the brain. All kinds of physical evidence to, like where they do experiments with cutting out pieces of the brain, a lot of ways of scientific evidence of establishing this belief. Just let it in. Don't endorse it, just let it in. Don't bite off my finger. <laughs> Just look to where it's pointing for a few minutes, okay? The notion is that if memory, of course, is not stored in our brain, then where is it, <laughs> right? The philosophy is very simple, that all members of a species are connected together through what they call morphogenetic fields, just very much like magnets. And these fields surround all human beings. The hundredth monkey is the number the 100th monkey, off the coast of Japan, there's an island. And they took a group of these monkeys from one species and they put sweet potatoes out there on the beach. And they watched the monkeys. And the monkeys began to wash the sweet potatoes in a certain way that was peculiar to this species. And they began to eat them in a way that was peculiar to this species. After a given amount of time, when a certain number of monkeys within that species began to do that, the same behavior began to crop up in monkeys of the same species on islands two and three hundred miles away. The question is, how did it happen? How could that have happened? And that's without going into all the details of that. If there is truth that all members of a species are connected, that all human beings are connected as well. And if all of us are connected in some way that we don't understand, but in fact are connected, then I'm not here to tell you that you have to be thinking positive thoughts because it'll improve your life. I'm here to tell you that you have an obligation <laughs> because you could be depressing somebody in Uruguay right now <laughs> by thinking negative thoughts. It's true. Now just think about it. Just let it in. The highest form of ignorance is to reject something you know nothing about. That's the highest form you can get to. We know so little about this whole idea. But what we do know is that when human beings begin to think in positive, healthy ways, that they reduce certain endorphins into the chemistry of your blood. This is from Anatomy of an Illness, Norman Cousins. And that when you think positive, happy, loving, laughing thoughts, there's a different chemistry that goes into your body than when you think depressing, negative, anguishing, despairing thoughts. And that thinking, the way that you decide to think, has a dramatic effect on your chemistry and on your physiology and on your health as a human being. And that we know that when they did the artificial heart transplants, when they were looking for all the people up in Kentucky, who they were going to pick. There were many, many volunteers because a lot of these people only have a few weeks left to live. So if they could get a few more months, they were very willing to be expensive. The number one criteria was the will to live. What kind of an attitude does this human being have? How do they think? Because we do not want somebody who gives up on life, who is going to feel bad, who is going to be telling himself that he shouldn't be in this position. So as you begin to think about the possibility, here's what Ken Kais did in The 100th Monkey. He said, and The 100th Monkey is about nothing I've said so far. That's just all what I learned through my own research and my own reading and so on. The 100th Monkey is a book about nuclear war. The belief is this. If enough people on our planet think there's going to be a nuclear holocaust and believe that it's going to happen, we are going to create it by the way that we think. When a critical mass, and that's the theory, the hundredth monkey, when you get to a certain number of people thinking anything, then it begins to spread to the rest of us all over our planet and we begin to act upon those collective thoughts. 
the thinking is, who knows, I'm open to it, that we are not only connected to everybody who's alive, but everybody who ever has been, and everybody who ever will be. That we may all in some way be connected. So that if we want the number one thing in the hunger project is that we are trying to raise the consciousness of the world. To help people to understand that starvation is something we cannot tolerate any longer. We won't have it. We won't think of it as something that is inevitable. What is happening now is people are beginning to say, what can I do? How can I change that? The same thing is true with nuclear war. If you want to think about raising your children, my friends, what more important parental task do you have than to make sure that our world is a place that's going to be inhabitable for our children and our grandchildren? As Victor Hugo said, there is nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And we can make any idea have its time come by collectively thinking in these ways. And imagine that we're all connected like this. Imagine.